We are in week three, and this week, Crompton's uh, Akron offense will be taking on Michigan State. Another big task. Last week, of course, we took a tough loss to Clemson, 45-28. We uh, showed, res- showed ourselves well, but uh, obviously in the end, we uh, fell to a much better opponent. Michigan State, similarly, is very good. We'll quickly look at the um, whatever the tail of the tape here. As we see, Michigan State, they're good, right? They're good, but they're not quite as good as the Clemson team we played last week. So, hey, who knows? Maybe we can shock the world here. Uh, offensively, we, you know, statistically, not a lot of data there, but we, <laughs> we're a little, uh, you know, 406 yards of total offense to their 405. So we actually have, uh, you know, we showed better last week in the passing game uh, and total offense-wise. Michigan State, though, obviously, much better running game. Uh, and defensively, they're going to be tough, but you know they're not going to be as talented as that Clemson offense last week. So you know who knows? You know maybe if we play well enough, we can uh, get a big shocking win. Uh, but let's look around the country. As top stories, too early to panic. Notre Dame fans are already dreaming of next year after a season opening loss. Florida State beats Notre Dame 49 to 24. Big win there for the Seminoles. They're trying to you know relive their former glory in that program. Michigan looks forward to facing Cincinnati on showdown Saturday. Michigan last year made it to the college football playoff. Not a lot of respect this year. They were ranked down near number 16 to start the season. Right now they're number 15. They had a win last week. And they are very good. You can see A-minus is across the board. Uh, Cincinnati also in the college football playoff last year. They were actually the number one team going in, but they got put out in the semifinal. Um, but that'll be a uh, kind of a... You know, a matchup between two of the top teams from last season. Early win, early loss. The Bruins win their opener, but will be without Charbonnet for nine weeks as Zach Charbonnet, their running back, is injured. He's a senior. Tough blow for him. Uh, he'll get back just in time to maybe see UCLA get to the Pac-12 title game. And we look at this week, Virginia Tech, Florida State. Uh, the Seminoles trying to um, you know build on that win over Notre Dame. They'll take on number 19, Virginia Tech. Big game there in the ACC. Uh, Alabama controls all three phases of play in defending their turf as the Crimson Tide dominate Bowling Green. It was 42 to nothing at halftime. Obviously, they took their foot off the gas in the second half. Oops, as they uh, but they do get the win, 49 to seven. Then we look at this story: Georgia notches their first SEC win of 2022 against Kentucky. The Bulldogs with a touchdown win. They kind of had to hang on there. Kentucky tried to make a comeback in the fourth, but Georgia wins, 41-34. Uh, and then Coastal Carolina survives the scare as uh, the Chanticleers win 27-24 against Troy. They're trying to get back in the top 25. Tigers are all geared up to start their conference schedule this weekend. They'll take on Vanderbilt. Vanderbilt starting out 2-0. They had another big win last week. They beat Texas Tech in the season opener. Last week they beat BYU 35-28. So uh, Vanderbilt, they've already matched their win total from last year. Last year they went 2-10. and Now they're 2-0. And we'll see if they can keep things going against LSU. Looking at the top 25, uh, number one is Alabama. They're still uh, ranked number one. Uh, 99 overall defense. They're going to be a tough team. Obviously, nobody's going to want to play Alabama this year. Iowa State is number two. USC is number three. NC State four. Utah five. Georgia six. Florida seven. Oklahoma eight. Clemson nine. And Arizona State is ten. So that's your top ten. Then you got Ohio State, North Carolina, Cincinnati, Texas, Michigan, Michigan State, Arkansas, Florida State, Virginia Tech, and Pittsburgh. Rounding out the top 25, Notre Dame fell uh, for their loss to Florida State. All the way down to number 21, Baylor's number 22, Oregon State 23, Oregon 24, and Auburn 25. Uh, just to look at the others, even Goltz, Ole Miss uh, fell out. I guess they lost. I don't remember who they played. But uh, they did receive some votes. LSU, Central Florida, and Kansas State uh, round out your uh, other teams receiving votes Heisman watch right now still led by Bigsby the Auburn running back Uh, you see a couple guys moving into the list Trey Sanders running back from Alabama and Davis Price from LSU Uh, all running backs right now in the Heisman watch Uh, players of the week we'll see if we had a guy on there I don't think we did obviously not NCAA but maybe we had a uh, guy in the Mac Nope, looks like Lou Nichols over took it over DJ Irons. 26 carries, 159. Hard to argue with that. Three touchdowns. Um, but you know what? That was against an FCS opponent. It seems like uh, Irons should have made that. Of course, the pick six might have knocked him out. Uh, so that's a look around the country. Let's talk real quick about our recruiting. Um, I need 17 guys this year. Look at our team needs. Uh, yeah, 
got 17, actually it's 18. I've got 17 seniors, but I've got a slot open. I think actually that might be the, I had a transfer from last year. So maybe it is just 17, but whatever. So I'm having to cast a wide net, bring in a lot of guys. So my recruiting board is pretty extensive right now. Uh, I'll probably, you know, if some of these guys don't work out, I'll be expanding it in starting about week five or six. But um, I need a quarterback, so I've got a couple guys I'm going after. If I sign both, I sign both. But if I get one, I'll probably drop the other. Um, right now, I lead for both guys. And it looks like Poole, 66 overall, at least as we're scouting as of right now, he is the uh, slightly better player. Uh, but I lead uh, by 400 uh, for Oklahoma there. Lead by 350 for Hayden. Doesn't look like anybody's recruiting either player. Um, so I have to just kind of hope to be able to hang on there. Ryan Shackelford, I need three receivers. So I've got four right now on the list. I just added Gross. I'm not going after him yet. Kind of hoping that uh, just putting him on the list, offering a scholarship will kind of get me into his to his list of schools. But as you can see there, the teams that he's put on his list are, we are way, we are nowhere near uh, any of those teams, but nobody's offered him a scholarship yet. So I'm kind of hoping that'll give us an edge. But Shackelford is a, uh, he's a very good prospect. He's a four star. Nobody's going after him right now. I've been since the beginning. And right now I have a slight lead over UCLA. I'd say that if anyone else comes after him, he's going there. But as of now, I do lead. Uh, Jefferson, uh, I'm gaining on UCF there. feel like I'm going to take the lead. I, I actually went added some points to you know bring him in so reggie jefferson a big prospect that we would like to get um right now us and ucf the only teams to offer uh caleb campbell i lead on him there's three schools going after him uh tight end i need one so i'm going after a couple uh michael lee is a guy i've had on my list i just started putting points towards him this week though because i'm a little less confident about parker i lead on parker but you've got Michigan, Cincinnati, and Ohio all offering him scholarships. If Michigan starts putting points towards him, I'm, I will lose him. So I'm going to kind of go to a fallback there, Lee. You look at his list of schools, there's no uh, upper echelon teams going for him. So I'm kind of hoping to land him, if not Parker. Uh, Garcia is uh, defensive end. I need one defensive end, so I'm going after a couple here. The, I've just added them to the list. Dukes, the defensive tackle that I lead on. I need one defensive tackle. Linebackers. I don't, I don't mind changing positions for linebackers. Um, we'll look at our needs real quick just to show. I, I do have some guys graduating. I've got three linebackers graduating. Uh, I want to keep six outside linebackers on roster and at least three middle. I think our defense is a 3-3-5, but I, uh, whatever. I want to make sure I replace those guys. So I am, um, yeah, putting points towards several right now. Well, three, I guess. Four, counting the middle linebacker. And I'm gaining on uh, Horner, as you can see. Uh, I'm 380 back of Northwestern, but I still think I got a shot. And if I can just get some guys signed, uh, I'll be able to put more points towards him. Uh, Parrish is another guy. I lead on him. Merriman, I'm closing in on Ohio State. And then Clark, I lead on. So uh, I just want three of those four. And if I've got to move somebody around positionally, uh, I'll do it. Uh, secondary is a huge area of need. We'll go look there real quick. I'm I'm graduating a couple corners. I need two, so I'm going after. Uh, right now, I've got two on the list with an athlete that I'll probably end up being the cornerback. I'm graduating two free safeties, but really I can do with just three. But I do want to have, make sure I have uh, four strong safeties. So I'm trying to replace both strong safeties. Uh, so looking at the guys I'm targeting, uh, Peterson, I lead on, uh, I'm the only one, one to offer, only one to offer on Lewis. So I lead on him. Rivers is the guy I just added, trying to get my name and throw my hat in the ring there. He's got no, but no offers right now. So I'm hoping that my offer will, whatever, push me over the top. Uh, slowly gaining in Illinois for Pendleton, uh, strong safety, Noah Jones, strong safety, looking at picking up, uh, Picking up on Virginia Tech there, although the Hokies have offered. So if they start putting points towards him, who knows? Quinn, uh, I'm gaining on him. I just put him on last week, I think. And then Richardson's the athlete that'll end up playing in the secondary somewhere. Uh, I've got a pretty big lead on him. So that, uh, you know, hopefully we can get him signed. So that's a look at our recruiting so far. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that beyond that. Um, now, what about Michigan State? Well, Michigan State is uh you know obviously they're a big 10 power five opponent 
so far this season. They've only played one game. It was a struggle. They beat North Texas 31-28. to So, you know, maybe they're not quite as good as what people think when they actually get onto the field. So um, we'll see how that goes. Looking at their depth chart, I'm only going to worry about their defense, but uh, defensive end Fletcher at 82 is pretty good. Right end, 81. It's okay. And the defensive tackles, 81, 80. So they have 80s across the board on the defensive line. That's going to be tough for our offensive line as we are still young and, frankly, not that talented. Outside linebacker, you got two 83s right there. Middle linebacker is an 83. Right outside linebacker is an 89. Crouch, probably their best player defense. Um, he is going to be, yeah, he's going to uh, be tough. He's going to make life difficult for us right there in the middle of the field. You'll be able to stop the running game while also covering the pass. Uh, Kimbrough is their top cornerback, 87 overall, so he'll be uh, tough. But if you look at their depth, um, if, this, if I was a Big Ten team, this would not be scary. But for a MAC team, when you're that deep, like 76 is not terrifying. But when your fourth cornerback is a 74, that, that, you know, that's that's depth. Uh Grouse, their strong safety, or free safety is an 85. Strong safety, Dallas is an 82. So you're looking at a team that defensively the average sort of in the low 80s, um, which again, you know, for in the Big Ten, that's probably not very good. But for a MAC team, that's going to be tough. Their kicker is an 85, so he's, you know, be able to make most of his kicks. Punter's a 74. So, you know, field position, that might, you know, we might have a field position uh, advantage there. So that's a look at Michigan State. Um, obviously going to be a tough game as our team is nowhere near the quality of a, of the Spartans, but we'll see if we can't use some smoke and mirrors, make some things happen to get a win. So let's go ahead and dive into the highlights of this game. So looking at the team stats so far is we, you know, not a lot you can take from this team that only played one game, but defensively, obviously Michigan State has the advantage. Offensively, it's close. They have a slight edge. Uh, Yardage-wise, though, we, we were better in our first game. And passing in game, obviously, we were a lot better. But Michigan State probably won't have to rely on the pass uh, near as much as we kind of do. Uh, top players there, wide receiver, quarterback, and their left guard. They're all offensive players, so we won't see any of those guys for us. Matheson is our number three top player, but he is injured for three weeks. He is out. That's going to make things difficult for us. Uh, Michigan State, meanwhile, no injury. So our top receiver, top player on offense, out. And so um, can we overcome that? We'll find out. As we go to the field, we are here in East Lansing. And Michigan State, uh, they're 1-0. Akron 0-1 coming off of a loss at number 9 Clemson. Mel Tucker, Michigan State uh, head coach, looking to continue to build that program. And this is, uh, you know, this will be a big challenge for us. Chance for us to rub the Mac a little bit here. Obviously, Michigan State, Big Ten opponent, Power Five, uh, Akron from the Wee Mac, uh, the little brothers of the Big Ten. We uh, had a chance to get a little respect for, for the Mid American Conference. We also, um, we're building obviously towards our Mac season. We know that these games are. Uh, a big ask, a big challenge. And, you know, while it'd be great to win, we're really trying to find out what we have and uh, you know, prepare for our, you know, our, our conference opponents. Because um, we do feel like this year we've got a chance to win the map. So we're one of the top teams in the conference. So, um, yeah, we're finding out who we are a little bit. Uh, it might be not the best way to go about that, playing the top teams in the country. But here we are as we try to get this win, uh, or at least... Uh, play well, show well for the MAC against a Big Ten opponent in Michigan State here at Spartan Stadium in East Lansing, Michigan. So with um, with uh, uh, Matheson out, I'm going to be using my tight end a little more. I'm just going to call him O because I can't pronounce his name. And Iron Sacked loses eight yards, so we squander that good field position. It'll be fourth down. It's a covered sack, I guess. It was a short drop, so Iron should have gotten the pass away quicker, but he did not, and so State is able to come in and get the sack. Third and six. We need the, what, the 42. And Irons is pass. It's complete. That was just a little uh, curl route to Grimes Jr. He makes the catch, picks up 13, so that will be a first down. So, Michigan State right now, they are dominating. We are um, not able to get anything going. 
even what we did, our offensive line holding penalties killed it. And another one. That's another holding penalty. This is what happened to me last year. Just we we get three or four in a row, and it would just kill. A lot of times it would happen when we get across midfield. It would kill drives. Third and 41. And Irons is going to be sacked. Fourth and 48. <laughs> oh, boy. This is the fun of coach mode. All right, when you get these holding penalties, and then, you know. Yeah. Fourth and 48. Hopefully that's the only one of those we have this game. Well, Michigan State, we defense hold, so uh, well, there's a completion to Mumfield for 16 yards. That was just a go route on the stick. Stick is one of those uh, three receiver sort of triangle combinations, and there he's able to squeeze it in. All right, try a little wheel, but this is out of a play action. And here goes Irons. Pocket holes well. He gets it away, and that's complete. Grimes tiptoeing at the line or at the sideline. Looked like he kept his feet in. And that'll be a first down. Putting a couple plays together here. Second and 12 now. At the 49 of Michigan State. Irons. Try to make that up. And pass across the middle is complete. Oh, and he gets away from the tackle and gets down to the 31. That's Grimes for 18 yards. Big play there by Tony Grimes Jr. So you see Michigan State offensively, they're doubling us up uh, twice as much, twice as many yards. But we are still only two scores down until Irons sacked with the horse collar. But again, that is not illegal in NCAA 14. I don't know if they call that a horse collar. Looks like you may have got him around the shoulders. Yeah, they might not have called that a horse collar. Third down and 16. Going to do a little jet motion action here but it's play action and the wheel and irons hit as he threw incomplete fourth and 16 there's no way smigel will make this field goal it's a 42 yarder and he absolutely is terrible from 42 yards so third and six we need the 42 a little past the 42 and state blitzes we pick it up and oh that's complete that is that mumfield yes 23 yards first down so here we are. Um, this probably won't get us a touchdown, but hopefully it gets in field goal range, and it will. This is the most absurd down and distance that I've ever had in state football. Irons here takes off, and yeah, there's another holding. So it, we're going to look at second and 72. They might go half the distance. Oh boy, here we go. Third and 68, and Irons out of his own end zone, and he we've got another holding penalty, and he fumbles, and we're going to give up a safety or something here. It's just an unbelievable series of downs. I mean, I don't even know what to... So that's the end of the third, Michigan State. They're, I'm... They've definitely kind of cooled off. The first quarter, since the first quarter, they've not been near as good, but they still lead, and they've, whatever, bottled us up, and we've helped them to bottle us up with penalties and drops, and that's where we are right now, 21-3. to three. Third down and three. We need the 30. 30 gets us the first down. Iron's going to run for it. He's going to get it this time, and he'll get past the 40. Second down and three. We need midfield for the first down. Irons, he's going to run for it again. This time he fumbles. And State recovers. It's been that kind of a day. It's been that kind of a day. It's our first turnover. Michigan State's had three. But offensively, you know, we've just, yeah, we've just killed ourselves. We made it impossible for us to have a chance to win this game. So from the 35, we're going to try shakes to longer, but Irons just bails on it immediately, and he'll take off. He gets 15 yards, so, you know, we'll take that. I guess Michigan State probably, you know, they dropped eight on that. Seven, maybe. So he'll get uh, he'll get the first down, keep the drive alive. Maybe we can come up with some consolation points here. Irons, with Akron trailing 27-3, to three, he will throw across the middle. Ooh, he gets the first down. Big conversion there. Qualls with the catch. 
First and 20. Our offensive line has just decided that they are not going to let us have a chance to win this game. Pass across the middle. That is complete to Mumfield, who gets off a tackle and gets the ball down inside the vent. He's going to take it all the way. Any flags? Does look like there's any flags. 50-yard touchdown reception from Kanata Mumfield. As just It was just an in route. Just a little dig. Makes the catch. Breaks a tackle. And then gets away from another. And the player whose tackle he broke got in the way of another defender, which freed Mumfield for the touchdown. Well, that'll do it. Uh, so Akron, you know, not a great performance from Crompton's offense today. Really, the offensive line let us down. Uh, we had some drops that hurt us, but the offensive line just poor all around. They, um, you know, whatever, you know, they, they it wasn't uh, just an absolute total failure every time, but, you know, a, a, there you see, letting pass rushers through to get sacks. There were uh, many times where their run blocking was just non-existent and then holding penalties. So there's no phase where they were good today. Um, Irons was constantly running for his life. And you know, even then sometimes his receivers would let him down. They would drop passes. And so that would, uh, yeah, it made it impossible for our offense to have any success moving the ball. So tough, uh, tough game for the Akron offense. Uh, credit to the defense holding Michigan State to 27 and actually got three turnovers, although I'm pretty sure yardage-wise, Michigan State racked up a lot of yards. We, um, yeah, we just didn't match up today. Looking at the, uh, looking at the team stats, um, first downs, yeah, they, uh, just, they, they, had almost, they had almost 500 yards of offense, so they, they moved the ball. The three turnovers obviously hurt them. Uh, one interception, two fumbles lost. Uh, we had the one fumble that killed one of our drives. They and they were just you know all around the better team today. 60 actually ran more plays than us. We ran 65. Well, they ran the same. 65 plays each. Um, we're used to running more plays than our opponents. Uh, neither of us were very good on third down. Um, <laughs> we're actually slightly better on third down. They also missed a fourth down. Uh, and time for that. You look at the penalties. Look at that. 12 penalties, 109 yards. I'm actually surprised it's that little. I thought it'd be up around 150. But, uh, you know, the holding penalties just killed us. Killed us. Offensive line. So poor today. So poor. Player stats. Uh, irons, 26-43. 60% touchdown. No picks. You know, so I guess passing-wise, not the worst performance that you're ever going to see. But for us, that yardage, that's got to be up over 300. Uh, running game. You know, obviously we're not a running team, but we've got to have more than this. 39, 37 yards running the ball, just not good. Uh, Mumfield had to try to make up for Mathis, Matheson being injured. Uh, he and Qualls. Williams steps in. He is our, you know, he had to step in at the Y for Matheson. And Williams gets, you know, does very little. Um, Agnanovic, Agnanovic. I mean, he had, the only, his only contribution was in the passing game was a drop. So he, you know, we needed him. I, we, I, he, he was on the field a lot today. We knew we were going to have to give him more opportunities with Matheson out, and he did not take advantage. Obviously, Michigan State is a very good team, so I have to take that into account. But just a disappointing performance all around for the offense. Uh, hopefully we'll, um, you know, learn from it and uh, do better going forward uh, next week things aren't quite as challenging we play Charlotte but that's you know that's going to be a team of similar quality to us and if we play like we did today we might not be able to win especially if Charlotte's able to be a little more uh, efficient on offense than State was um, so tough loss uh, tune in the next episode to see if we can uh, rebound this is Vol 4 for 1 signing off we'll see you next time